So we are going to do my butterfly ornament tonight. We are going to let some people get on and find me. Hopefully uh, that's going to happen. Hopefully we don't have any problems tonight. And Jenny will tell me, she's in the background, if she can see me live on All Facebook. right. So, Good evening, everyone. Well, I can tell you, I just saw me on my phone. <laughs> so, hey, Kim Walker, Belva. Hi there. Hey, Miss Robin. How are you? Okay. So, we are... Uh, live in some pages on Facebook. We're trying to make sure that we, looks like YouTube is up. I see some comments. Hi, Carolyn, Monica, Donna, Rosalind, you made it. Yay. Okay. You like my uh, background, huh? I thought I'd be a little festive and I wore my shirt, even though it's huge on me right now, which is a good thing. So anyway, to Tuesday Night Live. I am Paula McCoy and uh, I own Colors for Earth, but this has nothing to do with my company. This is for you one stroke people and for um, people that want to learn brush strokes, uh, basically. And I can hear Jenny's, <laughs> so Jenny's got me up too. So we're trying to make sure everything's working before we get started. Hey, Miss Lucy. All right, guys, we have some prizes to give away tonight. I have two sets of brushes. The brushes um, consist of two different square shaders and uh, my favorite liner that I like to use for my comma strokes. So uh, be sure and chat, tell me where you're from and ask any questions in the chat. Jenny is my voice in my head, I call her. She, You can't hear her, but I can. And she is in the background and she will feed me any of the questions that you guys have. So be sure and uh, pop those in the chat wherever you're connecting from, whether it be on YouTube or on Facebook. So we are going live on my personal page, Paula McCoy. We are going live on my One Stroke and More with Paula McCoy and YouTube all at the same time. We'll see if I can break the internet tonight. I thought I'd try three places. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm not on Paula McCoy. Okay, can you um, share the video, Miss Jenny? Can you share it from the One Struck page over there, just to make sure? I don't think so. Um, we're making sure everybody can see me on my page, guys. So, or just share the YouTube if you want. That's probably the easiest thing to do. So let me. Okay. She's going to share those. Um, so maybe it wasn't a good idea to try to go simultaneously on three different platforms um, or two platforms, two pages, so on and so forth. So anyway. OK, so some of you are on Facebook. Hi from Georgia. Hi, Miss Ann. How are you? So I'm kind of reading some of the comments. They're going by really, really fast. So welcome tonight. Um, I wore my Christmas shirt that I posted earlier and um, we're going to do the butterfly ornament. So let me. Give Jenny just a minute to make sure she's had time to share that so everybody doesn't panic that I'm not on, okay? So I've been a busy little beaver trying to get some orders out and do some things. Well, I'm sure you guys have too with Christmas coming soon if you're making your gifts. And I have so many that I need to make that I haven't had time to do either. So I guess they may get them after Christmas. So hey, Sandy. I'm glad you like my shirt. This is painted with um, Plaid's Fabric Ink products. Um, I did this a couple of years ago before one of our local Christmas parties. I needed something different. Um, I need to put more sparkle on it. It's not as sparkly, so, um, but it is fun. Hey, Miss Sharon. Uh, anyway, so yeah, you can do that. And I had a fabric class scheduled, and then we only had two people um, sign up, and so I canceled it. So if you're interested in a fabric class, you can either email me or you can uh, message me, okay? Be sure that if you're viewing from YouTube or maybe you're on Facebook and you have not, make sure you go out to my YouTube channel and uh, subscribe. Click the little bell so that you get notifications when I do go live. 
okay and that way uh, the more subscribers we have, the more we can do for you. And I know you've heard that before from Miss Donna. Hey, Miss Cindy, you got on. Yay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, switch. If you've not been to my YouTube channel, let me uh, show you what you'll see. Okay. So that is what you're going to see is the Dragonfly Bowl. You'll see the Colors for Earth logo and then my name there. Okay. So that's what you're looking for. So make sure, and I believe uh, the link just came up, of course, in YouTube. So uh, Jenny can put the link out there also. Okay. 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 So Jenny's, okay. Jenny, we apologize. Jenny's trying to find everything on Facebook. So if there's questions that don't get answered, I'll go back at the end of the broadcast and I'll answer you. Okay. So don't uh, worry about that. Um, but be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we hit a 5,000 a couple of months ago. And so thanks to you guys for all your support. Okay. So let me go to my overhead screen and I'm going to hide this guy. And I can't get it to unmute. Mute. Okay, so you should be able to hear me now. Sorry, I was trying to get them working. Okay, so tonight we're going to do the butterfly ornament. So I did, like the blue one here has two sets of wings, like back and front wings. I think you can see that. Oops, sorry, wrong way. <laughs> and then on the purple one here, I just did one set of strokes. You've got little flowers, we've got leaves, we've got comma strokes. So I did a couple of classes earlier this year on my ornaments. So I, I talked about how to roll the inside of clear ornaments. Uh, we use glitter it and I, the downloads are available if you want to take that beginner or advanced class. They cover different things. Um, I roll it with glitter it, dump out the excess, then I take an iridescent glitter uh, this is just from Walmart and dump it in, roll it around and dump out the excess. Okay. So um, not real difficult. Here's one that I have like a purple mix in it. Real fine um, glitter. Uh, this one I sponged on. I just put it out here in case I decide I want it. This one's got a, a frost effect of plaids that I sponged on there. Okay. So that's what this ornament looked like before I started it. Okay. Okay, so some people are saying they love the classes. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, the downloads are available. There's PDFs with them. Um, they're both $24.95. And um, Jenny, when she gets back in here, she will. Uh, I think I gave you those links, didn't I, Jenny? Okay, okay. All right, so I posted on my blog page on the Colors for Earth website. Okay, so that's my company. Okay, one second. Jenny's asking me a question. So, um, the, uh, okay, that's what they need. So, the blog has a PDF sheet that has the pictures, the step outs, and colors listed that I use. That's just as a quick reference for you guys. Okay, so that's available. Um, this I just is a little canvas board that I did to do those for you so you could see with one stroke. And what I wanted to make sure, and I've went over this multiple times, but I want to do it again. Um, when you do, when I do, I should say, my flowers, I will, let me zoom in. I do a Y and then, and I just dropped my marker. So, think of it in a Y and I paint that way. That's why I put this here so that you can see I painted that in a Y shape. And then you have two large areas on the side. If you divide those in half, now you have five perfectly spaced petals. And that's just a little trick. I don't remember who taught me that many, many years, probably 35 years ago. And uh, if I could remember, I would give them credit, but um, it's just something I've stuck with and it helps me for when I paint to evenly space things out. 
and it helps you um, not necessarily get into the pinwheel, uh, meaning if you just keep going around and around and around, you may end up with not enough space or too much space uh, left, and then you've got an uneven number. Odd numbers are the best, which is uh, the three, the five, okay? So once I rolled my ornament, and I, you know, let it dry, put my lid back on. Then I use these jewels. These are uh, by, and that's going to have a really big glare on it, Paper Studio. Let's see if I can turn it this way. There we go. Um, you can find them at Hobby Lobby, Michael's. Um, you can find different ones at Joann's. And then I take these and I cut them apart. So I cut them apart and then I just adhere them. And I'm not going to go into a big portion of this because... A lot of you have already taken my ornament class. And like I said, those are out there. If you choose, you want to learn more about some of the ones you've saw me post on Facebook. I did, I painted over 140 of these, uh, the flower ornaments last year uh, for orders. And it was insane. And they were, yes. The question is, are these four inch ornaments? Yes, they are. And then this is um, a four inch flat also. And let me pull a ruler down here and that will help you also. So yes, they are a four inch. The smaller ones, you know, you can do whatever, let me zoom back out, uh, whatever size works for you. So this is your three, this is your four. And these are the four, what I call the flat or pillow type ones which are great to learn on because they're not a curved surface did you have another question jenny okay all right so that's i put the jewels on and then i'm ready to go all right so let's get rid of that and i even i've prepped some little canvases that i'm going to paint on also but i want to show you on here first what i'm going to do okay so i'm using multi-surface paints trying to get out oh, this is the the flower ornament so I did these are the ones that I did like 140 of them last year I did not put myself in that position this year I uh too much going on too much going on okay so as long as you have a light and a dark or you can have one color plus um your white that works also okay so let me so you can see that the blue, two-tone blue, I've got uh, Prussian blue, and these are uh, multi-surface acrylics. So they have a sealer in them. I do not, because somebody's gonna ask, I do not put a sealer over these. I find it's fine without it. Um, you can, and these are plastic that I've got here. You can do it on the glass ones. You could also do this with your, um, uh, the enamels that are plaid enamels okay not colors for earth enamels because ours are fired in a kiln plaid has a line of paints for um, glass that is called enamel so i know that gets confusing for people i'm going to put a little bit of white out also just so i have it and i'm going to go ahead and get the purples out so i use prussian blue um, medium blue and these are all written on that pdf i've got light lavender if you didn't have that, you could just use white and it'll make yourself a um, lighter purple. And then I'm going to use Violet Pansy. You could use Perfect Purple. You could use Eggplant. There's, as long as you have a light and a dark is what you're looking for. Okay. That's all you need. And then um, you can have, I've got an eight. You can do a 10 square shader. These are um, some of my brushes that I sell. These are the 2200 series and we're giving away the uh, 10 tonight and an eight. And then we're also gonna give away, these are a set, uh, the liner that I like to use. So you're gonna get all three brushes, which is, I figured it up, uh, 3120 is the value on those, okay? All right, um, you, I'm gonna show you with a larger brush uh, this is one of Donna's uh, multi-surface.
Okay, I'm not sure what happened, but um, yeah, hopefully I'm back on, guys. Um, my whole thing just went blank. I had to reset. So please tell me if you can see me. Jenny, you may need to. Okay, all right. Jenny says we're back. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. It just shut me down. <laughs> of course. Uh, let's hope it doesn't do. I'm not even going to say it uh, because you never know what it's going to do. I don't want to jinx myself. Okay. So let's proceed. I'm trying to get this where you can see it. Okay. So I like to put the lighter color in my brush and then come over here and grab a hold of the dark. Okay. And work those into your brush back and forth and work it quickly you don't want to go one two three you want to work it quickly and what that does is allow that dark and light to go across your um, and it works differently on paper than it does on the ornaments guys because the paper absorbs it okay so you can kind of see how it goes from dark over to light okay all right, so, and I'm just going to go back and re-corner both of those colors, blend that in. So if I were doing a flower, okay, so on the flower, I told you I do it in, and I'm going to start in a V, okay? I think you can see that. Let me zoom in just a little bit closer. Maybe that's better, okay? So start in the V, even though I'm on top of where the line is, and I'm going to just kind of start it, press down, slide, slide, and come off the chisel edge. That's one petal. Okay, so let me go over here and I'll do that again. So just start the brush by patting it a little bit, press, pull, and lift. Okay, I'm not turning, I'm not hooking the brush. We don't allow any hooking, we're gonna call it. And then if I turn this around, now I'm going to put my same thing again. I have a V here. I'm going to put my dark color next to the center because that's where it would be darker. Same thing. Start, press, pull, and lift, and slide. This is also, Donna calls this a slider stroke. Um, in my world, in the ceramic and the glass world, I call this a wedge stroke. So same thing here. Press, pull, and lift. So you see how you have the Y, okay? I'm gonna get rid of my mouse so I can have more room here. Okay, so now what you wanna do is, and I think this is easier for a beginner, I'm just reloading the brush, that once you have those in, then you can come in and do your other two on the side. So one there, and I turn it and I always pull my brush towards me. I feel that I have more control with the stroke that way. Okay, so let's do this one over here. Now I'm going to push it just so I don't have to um, change the direction of the tablet. So I'm going to push those two. But when you're first starting, I would recommend that you pull. And one there. Do we have any questions, Jenny? This is called a wedge stroke or a slider leaf. Okay, so people are asking if this can be watched later. Absolutely. Um, it is on the blog page. There is uh, the video below the PDF that I provided for you. So if you go to that blog link that Jenny gave you, you're going to be able to get this PDF with basic color and step outs that I did for you. And then the video is right below that. So you can always find it there. It's on YouTube. Um, if you watch it on those, then it counts as watches for me, as opposed to Facebook. Facebook doesn't give you any kind of credit for it. All I'm doing is reloading my brush over here. So did you see how I did that? So start with your Y. So you've got two petals. I'm going to go over here. So that's the bottom of my Y. Okay, Jenny just um, re-pasted uh, the blog link on all the chat for you guys. So that is there if you want to click on it. 
uh, to go out and save that page. Okay. You can also save the video off of YouTube into your own playlist. Um, so that's a way that you can find it easier. I don't know if you guys know how to do that, but it's not real hard to do. Okay. So that's how the leaves are, or excuse me, petals and leaves. The leaves are the same stroke. They're just done with the greens, of course. Okay. So what I did was I had a variety. I'm going to put in the butterflies first. I'm going to show you how I did that. And then I just uh, took the same colors that were in my butterflies and did flowers with them all around. Okay. And you try to kind of like here, I created a bud. I think you can see like two petals and it's coming off of the jewels and same thing here. So think of the flow and try to work the design in and around your jewels. If you have jewels on there at all, um, you may be painting something that's just without any jewels like this one that I uh, did last night. And some of you saw it, I posted it. This was a class that Donna did. So it has no jewels on it. It just has the sparkly background. So if you don't have access to those, you don't have to do that. Okay. All right. So let's do the wings. So same process. Uh, depending on how big you want your butterfly will determine the size of the brush that you use. So I'm still reloading with both colors. Dark is going to go down where the body is. Okay. And I made this sketch a little big, so I'm not going to go quite that big. I'm going to press down and fan it out and come back in. Do you see how that's like a closed C stroke, we call it. And then if you press again and come in, this is a good way to start if you are new to doing brush strokes, this might be easier, but I'm also going to show you how you can do it all in one. Okay. But sometimes if someone shows you this way, then the other clicks and it's like, oh, okay, now I can do that. Okay. So if I were coming over here and doing this one and I have glitter everywhere all over this table. So if you press down and lift, press and lift, come out a little bit for that little bit of a tail and you just keep doing that same stroke over and over you're just overlapping them hopefully that makes sense sometimes it's easier to do them in single strokes and then you can get the hang of putting it all together okay so here i go press 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 and i'm fanning it out and then standing back up okay so you see the the wings there so that's what I've done here. So you put down two back ones and then you can either switch to a smaller brush or just don't put as much pressure down and you've got some little front ones on here. You can also add a little white into your uh, brush to make them look different also as far as the coloring. And when we get ready to go on to the ornaments, I think one of the biggest things that I can tell you is you need to load your brush for every single stroke, okay? Because if you don't, it's not gonna be solid on your ornament because it's a slick surface paper, it absorbs into, but it's just sitting on the surface. So it's almost like you're wiping off when you're putting it on. So I'll tell you all that as I start to put it on the ornament also. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the ones on top. So I've still got the same colors but I'm gonna add a little bit of white on one corner of my brush, just so that that is a little bit lighter when I do that second stroke, okay? So I'm starting here, but I'm just not going out as far. So you can see how that is a little bit different, but still matches. So press and lift, press and lift, press and lift and come off. Now, like I showed you, you don't have to do two sets. This one, I did only one. And this was a large brush to get them that big. Okay. So it just depends on what size ornament you're on, how large you want. So the rule for me when I do designs is you need to have three levels of interest. So one level, uh, the main focus is your butterfly. Your second thing that you would see on here are your flowers and leaves. And then the third is your comma or your background, which is the sparkle in the background inside. Okay. So you've got three levels of interest. Think of it that way also. Okay. So let me blend that just a little bit more. 
make sure I got it turned. And I'm trying to tilt my brush more than normal just so you can see it. But can you see how, whoops, it's lighter in value. So you can have it that way, or you can, this one's a little closer in value. I think you can see that. See all that treasure gold, all the sparklies. Hey, Miss Kim Walker, you like those purples? I do too. Purple uh, was my wedding color. Okay, so if we're doing the wings, when we get ready to go over there on the ornament, you can just... It's called the shell stroke, or I call it the M stroke, or the wiggle stroke. Okay, so just you would start them, and then you can come out and come back in. You can also do this with a round brush if you wanted to. If maybe the square is not your thing. Any um, questions, Jenny? No questions. Okay, um, let me grab a round look. Compliments. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, make it look so easy. If I had a nickel for every time somebody told me that, I'd be rich. But remember, I've been doing it for 30, uh, probably 37 years now. So um, when my kids were little, um, believe it or not, I was able to stay at home uh, with them and do my art and sell it. And then I bought the company back in uh, 2006 and uh, yeah my life has never been the same <laughs> okay so if i were going to do um with a round brush let me just show you real quick and then i'm going to get started on the ornament because i can keep going forever about strokes a brush stroke is a combination of color pressure this is a number eight round this is a large round but i want you to be able to see it um, so I'm fully loading it, meaning shampoo that brush, okay? Just like you would put water on your hair and you put shampoo. You don't just put it on the ends. You work it into the bristles. So you need to load, fully load, and then you can either side load with the dark or you can tip heavily, okay? So that you have both colors on the brush. And you could, whatever goes on the brush last comes off first. So if I were going to do like wings like that which is very pretty and i'm going to come back and add a little bit of the light blue and the dark blue on there and then i'm going to come down and i'll do like the bottom so a brush stroke is color pressure and motion so we have two colors on the brush the amount of pressure will determine the size of the stroke and the motion how you pull it how you wave it um, flip the brush, whatever you're doing, that's the motion. So color, pressure, and motion. So you can overlap. And okay, we have a question. Why do I use the plate upside down? I'm not sure. Are you talking about this plate, Donna? My palette plate? It's not upside down. Um, this is, hold on. This is uh, Donna Dewberry's uh, palette that she has. And it holds paper plates or it holds the uh, double loader, either one in there. Is that what you're talking about? I like the streaks and the wings. Yeah. So it just depends on um, what, you, what you like. Okay. So whether you, is that what you're talking about? The plate? Yes. Okay. So it's not upside down. It's just maybe looks that way, but see, it's not. And you can find these on Donna's website. Um, you can also, uh, you know, you can find anything on Amazon if you're, uh, if you want to go look for it out there. And they have a lot of different specials. I believe plaidonline.com uh, also has uh, all of these items too. I do not sell any of these. I sell my own brushes. But any of the products, you would have to go. Um, that's why I gave you the number so you can actually key it in and go search for them. Okay. So it depends on the look that you want. Okay. So I'm going to rinse that brush and then I'm going back to the square. Any other questions, Miss Jenny? 
Okay. You know, it's kind of, sometimes photographs do that. You, it, it's just weird, but yeah, I understand. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way and go to our, um, ornament. Okay. So this one is just a clear, I've got the silver sparkles on it, which I've got here. All of these other jewels are put on afterwards in the background. So let's set this one here so you can see that. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit closer because I think you understand the loading. I don't know that you need to see that, but I'll try to get it over here where I can manage it. Okay. So I have these across from each other, the jewels. So I usually start something over here. I don't know that I'd start it exactly in the center. I'd come off to the side a little bit. I think it makes, makes it more interesting. So I'm going to load with both of those colors again. And again, this is Prussian blue and uh, medium blue. But as long as you had two different uh, tones of blue, that's all you would need. Or just a darker blue and white, and it creates a, a lighter. Okay, so I'm going to set it down and just press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and come off. The nice thing about the, okay, the nice thing is it's on plastic. So like right there, I can just kind of push off some of my color. Okay, we have a question. She said, yes, what's the question? Can you use CFE or UGC without firing? Well, the, the UGC is a competitive company, so I'm not going to speak about that one. And you would have to ask them. And CFE, the no, you could not. Everything is a fired product, whether you're using the concentrates or you're using the designers. Um, you could do the enamels mixed with layering mix to do these strokes, but you can also get them with the color concentrates, whether you're doing uh, ceramics or glass with them. So there's ways to get the same look. And what I'll probably do is um, the next live. Do you see, I, I have to go back and reload often. Okay, for like half and half, because if you don't keep it fully loaded, that was the biggest question I think it happened uh, in the classes was how do you get yours so opaque? The only way you can get them opaque is to constantly load. You can't just keep going and going and going till your brush is dry. You need to reload for every time you stroke. Okay, that's just the way it is. And that's what I found works best for me. Yes, Jenny. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll go over. She said that some of the people are asking how I got them sparkly. So um, I do have two downloadable Zoom classes that I've done. Uh, I did four classes just recently uh, in October. So I roll the inside with glitter it, which is like a glue, dump out the excess, then put my glitter in it, roll it around, dump out the excess of that. I do sell the glitter it on the Colors for Earth website. Um, and Jenny can put a link to that in there. I don't think I sent you that link, Jenny. Sorry. Um, I did. Okay. Um, because this is hard to find and the shipping for like, and it's expensive on Amazon or the shipping is more than what the product is. And I was able to buy in bulk and, uh, give it to you at a, a bargain price. So, um, you can search but I guarantee you the shipping on one bottle is going to be like $15 and I sell the product for $7.25 and uh, we can put it. What am I setting the ornament on is the question. These are just those solo cups, like condiment cups. Um, uh, one of our other fellow painters, Lori up in Canada, and I didn't bring one back here, like a um, those paper egg crates are great because you can set multiples, especially if you're doing any of the flat ones like this, because they don't sit in the cups, but in those egg crates, they're awesome for that. So Miss Lori is the one that uh, shared that with me. And I'm just going to paint on this guy here so that you can see, and I'm going to have to get some more product. This is on top of that frost. Um, I don't, I've never painted on top of it, so I'm not sure what will happen, but we're going to see there's text to it and it's grabbing. I'm not sure I like it. So you have to think about your surface. 
um, and then let's do the lower one. I'm going to do like half and I'm going to reload because I can feel that it's dry. And then come up and off. Okay. So there's my wing. So that's that's step one. And then after it dries, you can't do it while it's wet. Then you can add that second layer. Okay. If you try to do that right now on any of them, it's just going to slide off. Um, this is a little canvas magnet. So um, I probably will need some floating medium with this one. Uh, floating medium, but I'm going to try it without it. I primed it and I just kind of sketched on where I wanted my wings to be. And on canvas or wood or something like that, you could, you know, with the pencil, um, you could transfer a pattern with graphite paper. We're not going to go into all of that. I just want you to know that you don't have to do it just on ornaments, okay? And you can always come back from this direction if you needed to. Um, I am going to be giving away uh, some ornaments. I'm going to give away some of these other, I like the canvases and stuff that I'm doing. Okay. So you see that one on there. So I did a purple one on one side and I've got a blue here, a purple. So I've got two of each. If you look from the bottom, I kind of put the blue ones across from each other and the purple ones across from each other. Okay. I also sign uh, my ornaments with a metallic marker. I'm going to try to hold this without getting my fingers in it and do the other side real quick. So again, these are multi-surface acrylics. They have nothing to do with Colors for Earth. This is just um, the ornaments. I did my free video last year at this time, Bert and I did, and I had talked about it earlier in the year and he had asked me if I was going to do it again. And so because we had said yes, I'm doing it. So this is for him. OK, so Robin's asking, would you use the floating medium on these ever? So floating medium is clear. It is the fluff that's inside the paint without the pigment, without the color. Um, I would not, Robin, because it's too slick. It's going to cause it to be very, very transparent as opposed to opaque. The, when you need the floating medium is when you go to your canvas. Um, so if I had a problem when I was painting that guy there, then I would have dipped into my floating medium. And I can show you that real quick. I'll put some out here in the middle. So it's just clear. I think you can see that. And then I just touch into it and then go back to where you were blending and blend that in to your color. OK, it just keeps it open longer and allows you to get where you're going without it starting to drag. So if you feel like you don't have any color, but you know there's color on your brush when you're on wood or a canvas, you may need to add the floating medium. Good question. Thank you, Robin. Any other questions? No? Okay, I'm going to rinse that brush. And I'm going to go to the smaller brush. This will be the, um, if you have Donna's set, there is a six, I believe it is, in hers. Um, or you can use the Colors for Earth 8 or 10. And in those giveaways, be sure you comment. Um, always dampen your brush with water and then blot it on a paper towel. just to, And make sure you don't have any water up here on the ferrule that can run down and then run into your um, run to your ornament and make it because this is slick anyway. Okay. So now I'm going to do some flowers. So you can, oops, sorry, you can't see that. Let's find one that looks a little better there. Okay. So here's your petals. So remember, depending on the size of the brush, it will determine the size of the brush stroke. So I'm going to grab that light blue, work it into the dark blue. It's like you're side loading it, but you've got 
Sandy asked if I'd use the floating medium on fabric. Um, I have. That's a specific technique. That's my watercolor background on fabric. Um, hold on one second. Let's do this and then I'll go back to that, okay? Don't let me forget, Jenny. Um, I use the fabric ink paints. So remember the Y that I showed you in the beginning? So I'm, I'm doing my Y. That's how I paint. It's how I keep myself centered and spaced. And that's just me. You know, every teacher teaches differently. And hopefully you'll pick up some tips uh, from everybody. And then you create your own style out of that. And I just realized I almost, I did have my finger on my butterfly over there, but thank goodness it was dry. <laughs> okay. So brush stroke is what? Who knows what a brush stroke is? What, it, what did I tell you earlier? We're going to have a little game here. Whoever can type it in first, and Jenny, it, what we see on our end is a little bit different than your end, okay? So whoever Jenny, excuse me, Jenny sees first on wherever you're watching, whoever can answer it correctly, what is a brush stroke? It is a combination of what? They will win one of my sets of brushes. A brush stroke is, ooh, I see Miss Jenny Bell. Talisa? Okay, we got Talisa. Is she on YouTube or Facebook? Or do you know? <laughs> She's on Facebook. Okay, so, all right. So there's a bunch of you that have answered correctly. I'm proud of you. All right. But Talisa, and she'll write your name down. Uh, so you're going to get one of the sets of brushes unless you'd rather have something else if you've already got these. So this is two different squares and then the liner brush that I use for my comma strokes. Okay. So this is a $31 20 cent value. Okay. I did my Y. I'm going every time I do a stroke, I'm going back over here, reloading, reblending before I go to my ornament. And then I'm trying to keep my hands out of it also. And I was talking and this one got a little wonky, but that's okay. I'll make it work. You can also wipe it off with the damp paper towel if you don't like something. Uh, the other nice thing about these palettes is they have the little holes. Um, so if you were standing up at a um, easel, you could put your brush in there. And I'm going to grab a paper towel and some water and show you. Um, you can also use uh, hand sanitizer. Works great to take off your color but i'm just using a damp paper towel and i see some of that had set on there for a while even though it was just a few minutes ago but you can still get it off i don't like how it was um you can clean make if you have if you know your skin is oily because i know somebody's going to ask at some point in time should you clean your ornaments i would if you definitely have oily skin clean them with uh, like some rubbing alcohol and then buff them dry before you start. Okay. That would be my. You like wonky? I Yeah, but this is video wonky. I don't want it wonky. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That just shows you that I am not perfect. <laughs> you know. And it's on a round surface, guys. You got to remember, it's, it's harder to. And then I've got the end of this ball here. There's like a little plastic deal that's popped up there so that makes it a little bit more difficult and then trying to keep your fingers out of it all these rules okay so you can do this with your other products um, so let's go back to the fabric thing as far as floating medium on fabric I'm going to stop on that because I need a place to set it down otherwise I'm going to get it all over me um, I have used it and I don't have an example here. Well, yes, I do on my shirt. Um, uh, in the, if you go back to the picture that I posted earlier today of the Christmas shirt that I'm wearing with the bulbs, the background around the green is kind of a haloed or it looks kind of airbrushed around the edge. So I will thin out the color and use that kind of almost like a wash in the background 
and then I'll take some floating medium by itself and just keep working that area till I get it soft and faded. But for the most part, and I use it with the fabric inks, which are basically a dye. They dye the fabric. They can it can go in the um, I started to say dishwasher. It can go in the washer and dryer, even the glitters. Um, it basically dyes. See, isn't that pretty? It's much easier on a flat surface. You notice that? So the question is, how long does it take for it to permanently dry? Um, you know, it's a good idea if you're going to sell or ship these. I will finish some one evening and then usually wait two days uh, to make sure that it's completely dry and cured before I ship it out. Um, these are not anything you can bake in the oven because mine are plastic that I'm working on tonight. If you had glass ones, uh, there is a process that you can bake those in the oven to make them more permanent. Um, and I don't do that. So I would have to refer this question to somebody. I think it's 350. Um, maybe Robin knows the answer or Lucy Matt for you put it in a cold oven. You, of course, it would be glass and then um, bring it up to temp and then shut it off. And then Lucy's gone. OK, yeah, there's another class going on another board tonight that some of them are on. So. Oh, oh OK. OK, so I'm just throwing some flowers on these because these are going to be giveaway. These are this is a little black canvas. Just so you can see, a lot of times when you see something a couple of times, you'll uh, pick up something that maybe you didn't, you know, see in the beginning. Okay. So even on black, it's very pretty. And you can always come back and outline. But do you notice how I'm doing the Y every single time? Now watch me do something without that. That is my rule of thumb is to do my Y. It keeps me balanced. Trying to get that one to come off. Can you see that? Okay. Okay, so evidently the feed on YouTube is delayed compared to the Facebook one. So um, I know there's like an eight second delay from what I'm doing and when you guys actually see it. So I have to wait usually if I'm asking you um, and you know to answer something. So Okay, and tonight Facebook is behind YouTube. Is that what you're saying? Or YouTube is behind. Okay. Okay. Okay, Sharon Matheson. Okay, so Sharon answered the, uh, and I should know that. I just don't do it that often. I have to always look it up. 350. If these were glass, you could. Now, okay. If there were glass, you could do the oven thing. But think about it. You've got jewels with sticky. This has got like an adhesive on the back of it. I'm not so sure that I'd put that in the oven. Has anybody tried it with the sticker jewels? So there's a whole nother thing. You might have to leave room, cure your paint, and then do it. I, I would try one before I did a whole cookie sheet full of them. Okay. Just FYI. Any other Question: I dropped three glass ornaments. Why they shattered? Okay, so Nancy is asking, how do they go about um, ordering the ornaments? My ornaments. So I'm, we're assuming you mean painted, Nancy. So if you find something you like, um, you can message me through Facebook or you can email me, and uh, Miss Jenny can put my email. It's either info at coloursforearth.com or ceramicsbypaula at gmail.com. If you go to my One Stroke Facebook page, which I really haven't even promoted, it's called One Stroke and More with Paula McCoy. And you can go to the photos and every ornament that I've ever made is out there for inspiration. Or if you see something... Um, you can uh, comment on there and just say, Paula, I want one of these. Okay. 
Uh, the four inch ones are twenty four ninety five, and that's pretty much. I I do some three inch, but uh, they're what did I sell them for? They'd be uh, like eighteen fifty, I think it was. Okay, now the paste ornaments are um, well, they're the same. So you guys saw this one that I posted the other day. Is that cool or what? I was really tickled. So this is um, the Colors for Earth paste that we have, the piping paste. And if you're interested in that, that's in the advanced uh, ornament class that I have on the website. It's as a download. And this is my product. There's kits available. The black and white, it comes in black and white. And the black and white kit um, is on sale. And I use some of these little dome beads. They're like pearls. Uh, I found those at the dollar store. Dollar Tree, I believe it was. Um, but I thought they were great for like little holly berries on there. No adhesive in the oven, everybody. Now, that's what I was thinking. You know, as long as you don't, yeah, do any of that. Here's one of the other ones. So whoever it was, Nancy, if you're, it was it Nancy that asked about the ornaments, right? So Nancy, this one is available. That red one I just showed you is available. So if you want that one, then I just need your shipping and email. Message me. Okay. All right. So let's get back to, let's do purple. Do you see all the glitter? So even though this is dried on the inside, um, I don't know if you can hear that. It shakes because some of it comes off on the inside, of course. Um, so just be careful, um, especially when you turn these upside down. They tend to fall out. So keep an eye on that. So the question is, do I have a beginner stroke video? I don't yet. Um, I, would, I, I need to do that. And I've said that for about the last five years. Um, so I will work on that. Now I do have, Judy, if you could go out and just do a search on strawberry. There is a strawberry video that I did a little over a year ago that takes um, leaves and strawberries, of course. But it goes into the wedge stroke that I'm using on the flowers, um, the ripple stroke um, or M stroke for the leaves. So anyway, it just depends on what's in that. But I don't have one that's specifically on uh, just strokes. If you're interested in something like that, then definitely message me and let me know. I'll put you on a list. And then um, I would like to do that probably as a Zoom class so that I can look at what you're doing so that I can see uh, what you're doing wrong. Usually I can look at the photograph and tell you, no, you didn't turn your piece, da, 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 da. Okay. So I'm going to put the second layer on this one real quick, and then I'm going to do the purple. So, okay. okay. So we have a question on whether you can color the paste. Yes, you can color the paste. Who asked the question? Karen Ashford, Miss Karen Ashford. Um, yes, you can color the paste. You can color it with your color concentrates because she's one of my glass people. She also does ceramics. Um, color concentrates. You can color it with, with your fired enamel. Mix the enamel first and then work it in. But unless you're going to actually... Um, use everything that you're mixing up i don't recommend that the cc is much better it's more concentrated hence the word color concentrate um, if you're an acrylic person you can color the paste with your acrylics also because you would be using it in a non-fired way okay do you see how that one is lighter No. Okay, so if you, yeah, Jenny said there's a lot of you that said something about specific ornaments in the chat. So what I'll do is after we get off air, I'll go back through and um, copy those and put them in an email to myself. Um, and then I'll get back with you on that. Okay. All right. So you, 
Okay, so the black and white paste kit, low fire, no fire piping paste. And I think, did I give you a link for that one, Jenny? I think it was just the one. Okay, Jenny's going to get the link and put that in the, um, it comes with the brush. It has um, the red brush. Hold on, I can't get a hold of it. It has the brush in it. It's got our tool in it. This is a tool. It's got a four ounce jar of the paste. It's got a bottle for each color if you're buying the black and the white. Um, and then I do have um, the advanced video covers the paste along with the pansy and the peacock feather acrylic. Okay, so you see how I put that second layer on top of there? Isn't that pretty? Which it basically it's the same as a flower petal. It's just how you're adapting them to what you're painting. So let's do it on this one where it looks a little more opaque. Isn't that amazing the difference in the coloring? It looks like a completely different color, I think. All right, so I'm going to... Can you glitter after is the question. On the inside, um, yeah, you sure you could. I don't know why not. I mean, there are different, um, you know, there's, uh, isn't it Decapodge that has a glitter, um, Mod Podge, that's what I'm trying to say, that has glitter in it. I mean, there's all different types of products. You can also um, just put on some glue, you know, like a clear Elmer's glue in an area and then sprinkle your glitter on top of there and that would work too. Okay, so I'm just going to do one on there. So let's do another one. Like I said, repetition is what um, you learn by. So if I do it multiple times, Hopefully it will help you with your strokes. And I just got color all over. I'm trying to stay out of the glitter because I got glitter everywhere. So press and lift, press and lift. And then just keep your pivoting. So this corner, the dark corner of the brush is pivoting in that V, so to speak. And then the outside is fanning out. Okay, so watch, watch this corner. So it's starting in and I'm just coming back to the same area, back to the same area, back to the same area. Okay, let's do that again. Did that answer everybody's questions? We're caught up? Okay. <laughs> I knew this one was going to be a little crazy tonight. Hopefully, um, what I may do in the future, guys, is if this is working tonight. Did we ever get the other feed, Jenny, on my regular Facebook page or just the link? Okay. Um, okay. So Carol asked, do I always load the dark corner on the left? Um, no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I, all I can tell you is. Normally, and there's a little bit of writing left on this brush, normally I fully load my brush in the light color and then I keep the writing of the brush towards me and I always corner load that corner. And that pertains more to fired product because it's harder to see the colors. So do I, it depends on how I put them out here on my palette. I may reverse it, but I always, without even noticing it, that's something that I do so like here where you can see the writing on this one on my brush. So if I fully load it, then if I have the writing where I can read it towards me, I always go down and that corner goes into my corner load, whether it's a light color or a dark color, it doesn't matter. But that way I always make sure I'm always loading the same corner. If I remember to have the writing towards me, that's my little trick. Okay. Hey, Miss Linda Stanton. Yeah, Linda, I think, I, yeah, Linda, I think what you're doing is the chat, um, you're thinking of the Zoom class you took with me and you're able to save the comments, but we're not able to do that when we're live, okay? We're not able to do that when we're live. Um, so if there's something you want um, to remember, 
then definitely copy and paste it into a Word document. Open yourself a document up. I'm going to change colors here so I can go to purple. Okay. Okay. So she understands. She said, okay. Yep. All right. So I'm going to turn this around. So I've got my purples here and get my glitter out of the way. Now that I've dumped it. Yes. Now I can remember that. Okay. I'm not sure what DM. Okay. So maybe it was the chat in Zoom. Okay. So I'm loading. Now, see, I've got my dark on the other side this time. But what's funny is, without even noticing it, guys, there's the writing on my brush. The dark is on the left side or the bottom. So it's it's kind of a, a second nature. But I thank you for asking that because sometimes I forget to tell you that. But that's And then you can just corner, corner, and blend. So I'm going to do um, the purple on this one here. One two. I'm going to go out a little bit further and come in and I can even stop because sometimes it's easier for beginners to do it like that and then come in and then come in. This is a canvas so it's grabbing uh, compared to what the ornament would and this is where you would possibly use the um, floating medium to make it easier but I'm just trying to do multiple times so you can see it like I said, repetition is how we learn. So it's just like a closed C. And then I'm pressing down and coming back up. And I'm going to tilt this to the side since it's easier to see maybe. And then if I want a little bit longer tail, I'm going out and I'm coming back up on the chisel. See how I'm up on the chisel. I'm going to reload. But remember, I'm loading for almost every stroke, especially if I'm doing it like this and I'm on canvas press and then come back up. I don't like that one. So I'm going to stroke over it a little bit. Okay. Isn't that pretty? All right. So let's do that again. Any other questions, Jenny? And you can reverse this. You can put the dark to the outside. Let's do that just to see what it looks like. Why not? Right. Ooh, look at that. So it just depends on what you're looking for. As long as you've got a dark and a light or a dark and a white, you can do anything. You can make different shades, tints of one color. See how I'm pressing down and going out there. I'm going to grab a little bit more color because I'm on the canvas. It's not, it's drier than what the ornament is. And then I'm sliding up. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Let's do another one. So I'm going to give these away. Um, let's see. Well, how can we? We'll do that. I'll have Jenny pick at the end. Okay. So be sure your comment. I kind of like that dark on the outside. I'm going to do that again. Press and come up. Press and fan it out. And then you're coming back. So you're coming back to this V. Think of it that way. So press and come back. Press and come back. And I'm breaking this down into simple strokes, guys, because there's so many people that don't know how to do a one stroke. Those of you that do, then you're 75% there already. Okay. But for those, because I know Linda says she doesn't do a lot of one strokes. And for some people, it's harder compared to um, the traditional toll painting. It really depends on um, what you've learned with. Yeah, this canvas is really dry, so I'm going really slow so that you can see those. Okay, so let's go back to the ornament and see where we want to. And try to have it like if this one's facing this way, then I'm going to have this one. They can be flying different ways. There is no up and down. I'm just randomly putting them on here. Um, you can get specific about it if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. Shelly asked, do I have a one stroke chart or guide? So like a stroke guide is what you're saying? I do not. That would be something I'll put in the, um, I don't even know 
if anybody does. I mean, there's different programs out there to learn one stroke. Um, I do actually, you know what? I've taught a brush stroke class before. Um, see, I'm not thinking acrylics. Um, it's on ceramics. And I have like a square shader. Here's all the things you can do with it. A liner brush, two different size liners, and then a round brush. So yes, I do have some of that out there. I don't know that I have it on the website though. So, um, oh, thank you, Gilbert. Gilbert is an elite instructor for Miss Donna Dewberry. Thank you for joining me. You're making me nervous. <laughs> oh, let's do a purple one on here just for the heck of it. Okay. So the question is, how many ornaments will the glue do? And you know what? That sounded really weird. I want to say 25-ish, maybe. Um, gosh, it's been, I haven't, you know, last year when I was doing them, I usually do about 22 at a time. Oh, it probably does more than that. Maybe 40 or 50. Um, Linda commented, Donna, does Donna have a stroke sheet? Donna has um, some different stroke studies, they're called, um, on her website where she um, does different things. So you can find those out there also. Okay, so here's the purple one. So if you break it down, see it's grabbing on this. This is that textured one. I'm going to dip into the floating medium real quick. I may be sorry that I did that. Okay, that definitely was a little easier. But this is um, the frost. Um, one of the ladies, I'm trying to remember who it was, last year said, oh, because I was, I love the frosted ornaments, but they're very thin and fragile. And when I say very, I had two of them break in my hands uh, last year, and they're extremely fine glass. And I almost, well, I did cut myself and I thought, okay, if I'm breaking them in my hand when I'm putting the jewels on, they're never going to last through shipping. So I started using uh, the plastic at that point. Um, and I don't have one of those. I'm going to tease you guys. I'm going to show you a different one that I haven't taught yet. Look at this. This is my fuchsia. This is actually going to my sister-in-law. So I don't know that she's on here tonight. My sister-in-law, Linda, in Chicago. Is that cool? With the fuchsia. So if you know how to do that, um, you know, you can put anything on them. I mean, your imagination is your limitation, I say. Here's one of them that's in the advanced class. This is the peacock. This one's in the advanced that you can download. If we Yes, the number eight square shader somebody's asking about. And then here's the pansy one. So this one and this one, and then my paste ornament is what I taught in the advanced class. And I had quite a few people take that. Miss Ann, you like that fuchsia? That may have to be in the next class, huh? <laughs> oh, fun, fun. All right, so let's add a second layer on here. Did I answer it, Jenny? white because otherwise that's not. okay so somebody was asking about the square uh so yes it's a square shader um my brushes it's the 2200 uh series or we call them the golden onyx brushes some people call them square shaders some people call them flats um Everybody has, unfortunately, there's no size or name standard in the industry. And I found this out when I bought Color Brush Company because um, they're saying, oh, well, isn't that a six that you have? It does, mine may be a six. Somebody else, another company could be an eight. Um, so unfortunately, there is no standard, which is bad on their part. Can she buy, Nancy wants to know, two ornaments like I'm doing tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can make more. I bought 
300 ornaments at the end of last year anticipation that I was going to do the same thing and sell a bunch. And then my world got turned upside down six months ago. And so I didn't want to try to stress myself out. Um, so that's the reason I haven't really promoted them. But yes, you can. Um, each one is individually different because they're all hand painted. You know, um, you're not going to, I want to put one on this pinky purple. I think I combined the clear iridescent and then I added some of this pink and it's all, if you go to Walmart, this is like a pound, 16 ounces. Okay. Pint. Um, it's like nine bucks and they have a whole bunch of different colors, even black. Lori from Canada uh, turned me on to that because that was much easier. I, I had one of the ornaments and I don't even have it here to show you um, published in painting world. I think that was October issue. And it was on the cover and I had rolled the inside with a black acrylic and yeah, the glitter is much easier to do then. But when you're on the ornament, you have to load every time you do a stroke for it to be solid and opaque. Okay. I'm going to go down to get a little bit of a tail and then come back up. It's going to be pretty on there with that background. And then I'll put like some dark purple um, jewels. So can you see that? Wouldn't that be pretty on there? The darker purple. Miss Robin would love that. She's a purple person. Okay. So let's go back here and we'll add a second layer. And I want my white added to my palette. So does this help you guys? Um, with some strokes and I will go back when we do the next glass one, I will try to do up some uh, glass pieces with these same strokes for those of you that use my fuse glass products and show you how to do them. You can still practice your strokes with your acrylics. It's much cheaper. Okay. And then you'll be ready to go and I'll do it on a live uh, probably after the first of the year. I'm going to go back. I don't like the coloring of this. So I'm going to go back on this one and I'm going to add the lighter stroke. That's the nice thing about one stroke is you can do that. Okay. The question is how long does it take to dry? Um, it depends on the surface you're on. So you've noticed, I mean, I'm going right back within five minutes. The canvas is going to dry even quicker because it absorbs into it. It's a porous surface where these are vitreous or solid. It's not going to absorb into it. Okay. Um, and whoever was asking, I just spilled glitter about finished ornaments. You know, this was a new one that I did yesterday. I did not post this on my personal page. Um, it is on my one stroke page. This is one that Donna did a class on last night and um, with the chrysanthemum. And then I added all my little scrollies and some treasure gold. Um, so I can do those also if somebody wants. But I do have to show and brag. I'm going to brag for a minute. These, I posted these. This is the same color of ornament. Okay. It's the matte color that I did the paste on. I brush stroked one and I did the paste on the other one. These are actually going to Miss Jenny that's behind the scenes that's answering your questions uh, as a gift to her. She's getting, I have eight of them, four of each, and she's getting those as a thank you for helping me do these lives. She has been very gracious for her time. And she drove 12 hours today, guys, from basically, where were you at? Albuquerque type area, Santa Fe. She drove all the way from Santa Fe today and jumped on here to do this. So say a thank you to Miss Jenny in the comments. She's the one that keeps me uh, straight and keeps your questions answered. <laughs> so that is her Christmas gift. Okay, so I'm on canvas, so I am adding, I'm touching into the floating medium because it's extremely dry. Okay. 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 So um, Jenny just told me that Gilbert's asking about the glitter 
inside. So I'll go back over that again. Um, and then, like I said, I do have the downloadables that go through um, everything step by step. I have a 25, 30 minute prep video that you get plus the three hour Zoom class. So I'm using Beacon Glitter It, which is on my website. Jenny's got the links to those in the chat. Um, because you can look for it other places, but I guarantee you I'm cheaper and cheaper shipping than anybody else. Because I that's the only reason I went ahead and did it. Hey, Miss Jan. Miss Jan bought a whole bunch of my ornaments last year. Where did I get the round canvases? You know what? I think it was their magnet on the back, believe it or not. Um, there was four in a set, and I believe it was Hobby Lobby or Michael's. It had to be one of those places. It could have even been Joanne's. Those are the only three places that I usually go. Okay, yeah, Jenny makes me look good. You're right, Money. <laughs> Less stress on Paula. Yeah, especially if we, I won't even go there. So anyway, I roll it, uh, Gilbert, with the glitter it, dump it out into one of the condiment cups so I can keep using it over and over. And then I dump in some of the glitter, whatever color you're going to use. Like I said, this one is like a purple. Um, this is just a clear iridescent. And this is like nine bucks for this 16 ounce at Walmart. Um, dump that in, roll it around immediately. So do one at a time. Glitter, roll with glitter. Glue, glitter, glue, glitter. And just keep it going. And like I said, I usually do like 20, 25 at a time when I'm doing them. And there's all different kinds of, look at, let me show you this one. Look at this. This is like a pinky purple. It's almost like a fuchsia color. Is that awesome? That's one. So yeah, you can even, anybody that's ordering can choose the color. You know, the, the clear is the best for any color, but I'm experimenting. This is a blue, which I think is absolutely stunning. So you can do white petals um, with a darker blue center on that would be very elegant. Um, this one is like a green gold. This is what I use. Okay, we have another question. Go ahead, Jenny. Put, okay, so, so if you're ordering on the website and you want to order an ornament and you want me to hold the order until I get the ornament done, put that in the notes section of the website, okay? So you can write me a note there and then um, I would send me a message through Facebook or an email, ceramicsbypaula at gmail.com or info at colorsforearth.com. So this is the green gold that I used. Uh, some of you saw just seen it oh here it is this is a bigger one this is like a five inch so this is the candle now i have three of these this is like a five inch guys this is huge these are i only have three of these um yeah roughly almost yeah it is it's right at five inch four and seven seventy five okay Redemo the five petals, somebody that came in late. So yeah, I have three of these available if anybody's interested. These, um, I'll, I'll let these go. Even though they're bigger, I'll do them for the same price, the $24.95. Okay, so somebody wants to do the five petals. So let's do, um, let me switch brushes. Because I want to, I'll do it on this little flower over here. We'll add a purple flower. So I'm going down in size. So this is the eight or even a six or a ten. Um, you always dampen your brush first. I'm going to go to a six so you can see a smaller one. Um, on the, especially on the little brushes, I'm going to add the light into my brush first, and then I'm going to grab some of the dark because it's harder. You have less space to have those two colors on your brush. And as you can see, it's, it makes it, and I had that medium in there, which I'm not sure I'm going to like, but okay. So press pull and lift and I'm going really slow so you can see it and you really need to do your stroke slow stroke slow that's hard to say um, remember and my pet peeve and those of you that have had classes with me know this or been on here is the airplane does not go to the end of the runway and stand straight up it gently comes off the runway so think of your brush as that plane it's press pull and lift 
I'm going to turn this around. I'm pulling those strokes towards me. So don't jerk off of your piece real quickly or you're going to get um, really, it, it just doesn't look pretty. Press, pull, and lift. And that's how I do them. I mean, so I'm telling you, I'm not telling you anything that I don't do is what I'm saying. Press, pull, and lift. So be, think about where you're going, where you're starting, where you're going to end so that you have a plan. Press, pull, and lift off to a point. Okay. We have another question. Okay. So the question is, do I have better, can I keep the glitter inside the globes using the glitter at glue? Is it better? I think is what you're saying. Um, I find yes. Now, eventually when it first dries, then you'll have, can you hear that? I'm trying to put it next to the, you're going to have a little bit, but you can just dump out that excess. Um, I haven't had any trouble with it. I don't, I, I tried some with like Glitterific and the different glitter paints and tried to roll them with those. They took days to dry. Now, I'm a production person. I, I don't have the patience to sit there and wait. This stuff dries. I mean, once I do 20, 25 of them, I'm ready to start painting. And I, I you can see, I, I lose a little bit, but I, I don't have a problem with that. Where do I get my ornaments? Um, yeah, I buy, I bought a lot of them at the end of the year so I could save a little bit of money at, um, Michael's had, well, Michael's and Hobby Lobby, not so many at Joann's that, um, they didn't have as many. Um, she had told us about if it's Linda Stanton. Yeah. She, you told us about a, um, one online when we were doing the Zoom class, Christmas something or other. Actually, I was watching the end of that video today. Maybe you can put that in the chat, Linda. I don't mind if you do that and tell them where they can get. Um, I have ordered some online from, um, is it AliExpress? Is that how you say it? Some of those or Wish, some of those overseas. But let me tell you, if you're doing that, be prepared to wait because it could take six to eight weeks to get it. I finally just got a shipment of heart ones and I haven't even got to paint on them yet, but it did take me about six weeks to get them. So you just need to search. I mean, there's different places and just check your sizes. Most of them is in millimeters. So make sure you know your conversions. Christmascentral.com is where Linda has bought some uh, different ornaments and she does quite a few um, every year. So you might check that out if you're going to get into production. Okay, so did hopefully I answered the question about the five pedal as I'm doing this. Okay, so I do my Y. I do my Y first. Yes. Okay. So somebody's asking about a tutorial on this one. I did, Donna Dewberry on Creative Innovations Facebook page had a live free video last night and I sat down and I didn't post these on my page. I posted them on my other pages. Um, hold on. Let me get. So while she was painting, this is, I got glitter everywhere. This is an envelope. Okay. And then I had another one of these canvases. And then I did the ornament. So while she was painting, I did all three of these. So there is a tutorial out there. Um, if you want me to do this, I can do it on another live. Um, but I need to give her credit for it because she's the one that came up with it. I just added all my different little strokes and treasure gold and all that. And that's because I've been doing that on my other ornaments. Okay. So there's so many things that you can do. But if you'd like to see me do it, I, I definitely can do that but she gets the credit for 
I did chrysanthemums on those burgundy colored um, ornaments about, what, two months ago. I sold both of them, so I don't even have those to show you. Um, but you can find those out there on my page. And I did all of that with like treasure gold. And we haven't even got into that yet. Okay, so I'm going to do this one and then we're going to the body. Because I'm ram rambling on here. Okay. Yeah, my four inch ornaments, somebody's asking at uh, 24 dollars And then um, the smaller ones, which are the three inch, um, $18.50. Okay. And then, like I said, I do the, the paste ones. You can find all of these out there on my page. So like this is a black paste on a frosted. This is a glass one um, that I've done. Okay. And they, okay, we got a whole bunch of questions. So let's, while I'm getting some black out, I'll answer those. Okay, Jenny, what's the first question? Okay, and that's Jan. Jan, if you're asking about the colors on the chrysanthemum, I use the same ones that um, Donna used. Uh, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I use Juneberry, Citrus, Sap, White, and I used uh, Rose Gold, Treasure Gold. But my pink was Juneberry. She was either saying you could use Juneberry or um, Berry Wine, because I still have those out here on my little stand. But that's what I used on this. Okay. Okay. Now the treasure gold on the butterflies um, I'm using, and I've got all this written on that PDF guys that's out on the website. Okay. So it's all listed here on that PDF. It's in the blog on the colors for earth website. So I use platinum or silver. That's these here. And then um, if you do purple ones, which I used on the purple wings. You see the little shimmer on that. So you can either use the light amethyst or this one is real close to purple topaz. If you had either one of those, they would work. And then on the blue one, I use blue quartz. So these are all called, it's the line of treasure gold, but there's colors in it. It's not just gold. And that is really confusing. There's like 13, 16 colors. Um, and I believe, uh, you know, Platt has done some online lives on even on Amazon and they had some specials out there with the treasure golds. They were in squeeze bottles versus these um, with the lids. But this is a two ounce. This is four ounce. If you're not going to be in production, don't buy more than the two ounce. I'm going to tell you. And Amazon had the squeeze bottles that are like the regular multi-surface, but they had the treasure golds in them. There was like four colors, um, the silver, the gold. Um, I can't remember the other ones. Where do you get the treasure gold? So Jenny, I just um, answered that. Amazon, you can get them on onestroke.com. Um, you just need to keep in mind how quickly you need it, where you order from. Okay. Because on Amazon, I'm a prime. So I get mine like the next day. Okay. Plaid also has uh, them on their website, of course. Uh, plaidonline.com. So any of that is out there. So what I've put out is, before I get sidetracked again, is black. This is uh, licorice. Okay. Um, is it sold? Oh, the treasure gold. Yeah. Just go to Plaid's website and just search for treasure gold and it'll come up and you make your choices what you want. There's different companies that sell this. Uh, same thing with Amazon. All you got to do is, and I've given you the numbers of the product on that PDF. So if you type it in Google with the number and then the name, like I've given it to you, it'll be real easy to bring it up and you can see your choices. Um, you can find them. I believe it was Michael's had all of them, but they had the larger bottles the last time I was in there. 
um, I was surprised they had them all in stock. Yeah, so these are, everything is by Plaid, okay? And it's Folk Art is the brand within Plaid. So Folk Art Treasure Gold, and then you've got Folk Art Multi-Surface for the acrylics, which has a sealer inside of it. So I don't have to go back and seal these. They have a sealer within them. They have just regular acrylics. You can use those also. I like these because they have that little bit of a shimmer to them. It's like, it's not a gloss. It's not a satin. It's kind of a semi gloss. Okay. I'm using my colors for earth and I'm going to tell you, this is the best liner. And I'm not just saying it because it's mine. Um, some other ones out there in the chat can tell you this is the 3600 number two and Jenny will put a link for you. It comes in three sizes. Uh, this is the number two that I'm using and I love it. It's a short length and it, you can load it heavy enough. And I'm going to tilt this to the side. I'm going to start up here at the top, press down to get the thickness of the stroke I want. Pull, pull, pull and come to a point or a tail. Then I like to turn it around, reload again, and I'm going to put the point of the brush. I'm going to tilt this so you can see, and I'm going to sit and lift. That's called a pressure stroke. So the body part is like a comma stroke. The more you put, remember brush stroke is what? Color, pressure, and motion. So the amount of pressure you put down, the color you've got it on, which is one color, and the motion is how you drag it to get that stroke. So the more you pressure that you apply, you're going to get a thicker stroke. If you don't apply as much pressure, you can get a smaller stroke. Some people are commenting that I'm coming through fuzzy. Okay. Yeah. It, am I stalled? No, I'm not stalled. Okay. I don't. Okay. I'm talking to Jenny guys. Um, I can't even see what my bars are. It doesn't even show. Uh, it could be internet connection. There was a warning within the program that I'm using that they're having some issues with servers. So I'm hoping it clears itself up. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. So make sure you've got a generous amount of product on. Press, pull, lift, 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 and come off to a point. Okay, turn it around. I reloaded and I'm going to set and lift up. That is a pressure stroke. Okay, and then you can pull. I'm going to just reload. And when you're loading your liner, don't any brush. It doesn't matter what brush it is. It, something that's a pet peeve of mine is um, you have to, it's like a, your hair on your head. Okay. You've got to shampoo that brush. So don't sit in here and just roll it like this because you're coating the outside. You need to walk it through. It's almost like you're drawing little trees, we call it like limbs and trees. So you've got to coat those hairs. If you'll do that, you'll be able to go a longer distance. And then you're also getting it back to that nice fine point. Okay. So don't just sit there and roll it in and don't load the bottom half of the brush. You paid for all the bristles. You get to use the whole thing. And I know that's kind of silly, but if I say silly stuff like that, you will remember it. So then just up on the tippy toes, you can pull in your antennae and you can do these a couple of different ways and then I can come back and I can add that little pressure stroke at the end. Um, you can do it in one stroke also, so to speak. Um, let's go over here and do another body. That sounds really bad. We're going to do another body. <laughs> so press. The amount of pressure depends how wide it is. Pull and lift and lift and lift. Take your time when you're doing it. So you almost go down and immediately start lifting up. Okay. The other thing before I put the antenna in is um, load that. And then I want you to pull some really, I'm just up on the tippy toes. Think of it as tickling. 
you just barely want to feather that out. And I'm, I'm anchoring my pinky over here because it's much easier when you can anchor yourself somewhere. Do some short and some long. Don't have them all the same length. I don't know if you can see that, the lights. Maybe it's better down here. And then come back and do your, make sure you've got a nice tail. Pressure, pressure. Okay. If you wanted, you can even come back and you could outline. So I've got some um, on my petal here, a little fuzzy area. So what you can do is sometimes I'll come back in my ceramic painting and I will outline one side. And you can choose, do the same side on each one. Okay. And then what I would do is... Um, it's just a way to clean up if you need to. Now, I did not do this on the ornament. Okay. You could outline the butterfly. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. Okay. Have I used the dragonfly? Um, I have. It's been a while. Um, you could use that just definitely because that's going to be more translucent. Make sure you're really reloading for every single stroke. I cannot stress that enough when you're on these ornaments, whether it's glass or plastic. That's the only way you're going to get a nice coverage. Okay. So, yes, I believe in one of my classes, um, the ornament class, Robin uh, Storm used some dragonfly glaze for her comma strokes, her add-on. So up on the tippy toes, just multiple strokes, feathering it on, different lengths. Make sure you've got a nice. Okay, so evidently our connection is um, not real good. I apologize for the quality of the video. There must be, uh, there's something, and I had a feeling we were going to have issues with the warning that they gave me when I signed on tonight, but I can't do anything about that. So I don't know if the recording will be clear or not, but I will do my best. Um, if I need to go back and refilm doing one of these, I can do that and upload it also. But isn't that pretty? Okay. So there's that one. I'll do this one here and then I'll have to let it dry because I don't want to set it down. Just make sure when you're doing that body that you have a generous amount of product on your brush because you need it to go the length and you need it for the thickness that you want. Um, and I don't, you could put little feet on them if you want. I've done that um, on my ceramic ones, but I did not do that on these. It just, you can add as much detail as you want. So we still have people out there. Facebook stopped, YouTube blurry. Facebook or the YouTube one. Okay, so uh, Jenny thinks the one stroke feed maybe has stopped on the one stroke and more Paula McCoy. So if you're on that, um, you may have to go out to the other. Now, I didn't think about this as far as being on a black canvas, but I'm going to show you how I can. Um, this will still. Okay, so you might want to refresh if you're um, on any of the platforms, you know, refresh your browser. That may correct the problem for you, too, if you can hear me, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, now I'm going to add some treasure gold on top of this body because of it being on black. So that's how you um, can make it work for you. Okay, so Robin said... Yes, we are here. Okay, good. <laughs> You're sticking with me. I haven't bored you. 
sometimes I get to rambling and we answer questions and I get sidetracked. I apologize. Okay. All right, any other questions or anything anybody wants to see? Little pressure strokes at the ends. I'm coming up on two hours. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's finish this little guy. And the last giveaway. Okay, so let me think. What? Uh, this is for another set of the brushes. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, the you okay, so maybe we need to pick from YouTube this time, Jenny, only. Um, so the evidently the YouTube people were so far behind on answering because of the delay of the video that they didn't feel like they got into the drawing fairly. So we'll draw this name or pick a name from uh, the YouTube. So I'm going to let you just spin and do that from the YouTube feed. And this will be for that uh, second set of brushes. And I'll show you those again. This is for the two different size square shaders and that liner brush that I'm using. All right. All right, Jenny has a name. Jenny Novak, <laughs> that's funny. Jenny is, um, actually has been to CFE training. She's a teacher out of Florida. <laughs> Yay, Jenny. All right. It's been a while. It's been a while. Okay. Um, let's also do um, a drawing from the Facebook now. And let's see. I'm going to give you a word. I'm going to take this from somebody else. I think Debbie did this last night. Whoever types it first, okay, whoever types the word that I'm going to tell you first and Miss my Jenny sees it on Facebook. We'll do Facebook first and then we'll go to YouTube. Okay. So type in butterfly. Whoever types butterfly first will win one of my canvases and I will finish it out. Butterfly. Hey, Miss Brenda. Oh, I want to do this one first. I see one. They're flying in. I can see them. <laughs> we started something. San Sandy Fullerton. All right, Sandy. I think you won a long time ago. Awesome. Okay. Yes, question, Jenny? Oh. Okay, you're writing this down? Okay, Sandy, and what was the last name? Hazeltine? H-A-Z-E-L? T-I-N-E. Okay, so two of the two Sandys were at the same time. So we're going to give two different ones. Um, so I've got like five little canvases. So we're going to give away five canvases. Then we're also going to give away oh, an ornament at the end. Okay, so go back to YouTube and... Let's do another word. We're going to say flower on YouTube. Flower. Whoever types flower first will win another one of the, whether it be a magnet or a square, you'll win a canvas and I will sign the backs and everything for them. All right. I see somebody that did. Okay. Who is, who is Sazzy Gal H? S A Z Z Y Gal H. What is your real name? You won one of the finished pieces from YouTube. You're welcome, Jenny. I need your uh, current information uh, to ship. Anybody that wins, you need to private message me uh, on Facebook or you can email me either way. And uh, we've actually got six of these things started. So that's three of them, right, Jenny? <laughs> okay, you guys are cheating. You're going to both of them. That's okay. <laughs> Somebody figured it out. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so we're back to Facebook. Is Robin on both too? <laughs> I've seen her on YouTube. <laughs> All right. So Sazzy Gal H. 
I need you to, because I don't know who you are. Um, oh, Sandy Hazeltine. Okay, okay, okay. I missed that. All right. So let's go back to Facebook and draw. Um, I'm going to have Jenny just spin for another one. This should be our fourth one, right? Okay, while she's doing that, I'm going to continue on with uh, Treasure Gold here. And she's just going to spin. Yeah. Kim Walker. Kim Walker of Dallas. Yay, Kim, my girl. <laughs> All right, you get one of those. She'll be tickled pink. <laughs> Robin says she's just on YouTube. Okay, um, so let me go over this real quick. We'll give that a break for just a second. So that's four of them, right? Okay, so we're going to go back and do. So um, I put out a little bit of yellow ochre. You could use any yellow, and I'm just using uh, a dotting tool, and I come in and dot yellow dots in the center and I do overlap them and come out onto the petals a little bit okay and that's how I did all of these you can use the end of your paintbrush handle but it's going to be awful big for those petals so um, you can use a toothpick um, this is uh, what's called the kiss tool is what Donna calls it um, and you can use that to make dots she sells these on her website or we have the dotting tools on our website, which is just um, the wood handle with the round ball at the end of it. Okay. So that's how I did those. So even without the outline, so just load and add those. Okay. All right. So then as far as the treasure gold, let me do that on this guy since it's done. So I'm going to, this is the um, blue quartz, sorry. And this, here, here's another one of my little secrets, okay? Because this is thick, it's stringy. You got to be very careful when you load it. You need to wait until that string goes away, okay, before you start. These are, we're going to put these little pressure strokes out here on the wings. So you do need to have a little bit of a point, and then I'm just press and lift press and lift straight up but go slowly because that color is very thick and you'll get a string and you'll it'll string across your design if you're not careful okay so take your time and don't rush it keep it fully loaded for each stroke and see how I'm I'm really waiting until that string goes away because it, it's going to make a mess if I don't keep an eye on it. Now, you could use just silver on here. You don't have to go to the blue. I just fell in love with all these treasure golds, so I have every one of them. I hope they come out with more. Um, you can mix the treasure gold into a color. You can use the treasure gold to um, even do your strokes with not necessarily these accents but to do like load in the multi-surface and corner load in that and do it i did that on um red and gold on some flowers that i did okay so that's how you do that one and then so that one that's over here on that black i was going to show you how to you can also add um let me get this one here no i want this one the comma strokes that I add in the background, just randomly press, pull, and lift. Very slowly. Press, pull, and lift. And with the treasure gold, I'm loading every single stroke. That's the only way I find that I can get a nice solid coverage. I have some pencil lines here, so I'll erase those later. But do you see how slow you got to stop and really think about what you're doing? Two of them, and then sometimes I'll come back and I pull one from the opposite way. So that's kind of fun. 
I think that'd be pretty on this black. So you'll have to give me um, a little while to finish these up, guys. You know, I have that real job during the day. <laughs> this is my night job, so to speak. The second, oh, because she got two of them? Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. Thank you, Sammy. That's very, she, she won two because of the different places. So, okay, so we, let's do that. Let's let somebody else have an opportunity to do that. So when you're doing the treasure gold on here, on the background, which I use the silver. I don't want to put this blue one there. Um, same thing applies. You've got to load for each. And you noticed how I used out of my lid. That seems to work the best for me. This I started last year, and I can tell you this two-ounce jar is half full. So that just tells you how much. Okay, so she wants me to move things closer up to the camera. Okay, and don't move as fast. Sorry about that, I forget. So there is the blue treasure gold, and that was the blue quartz. And this is listed on that PDF out on the blog. The video is right below the PDF. Everything is, I, I started doing that months back because then everything is right there for you. You've got your pattern, instructions if there is any, whatever I've given you, and the video is right below. So you always know where you can go find it. Okay, so I'll shake it just to get it in the lid and then very carefully open the lid and it strings. So you kind of got to get it going. It's, it's a beautiful, okay, Jenny says we need to wrap up. <laughs> okay, all right, so go ahead and give away another one wherever we're back to. Are we back on YouTube? This is number four. Okay, let's type in purple on YouTube since I'm using purple. Whoever types in purple first wins another one of these little canvases. Purple. Hard to see tonight. I think it has to do with the internet. I apologize, Robin. I'm not sure what's going on. All right. Say it again. At at the Meadows, we're not sure who you are, since that's all it says, uh, has won one of the finish. So if you'll message me on Facebook or you can email me. Okay, remember this one was on the black and I told you it was going to be hard to see. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go along the side of that body and I'm going to do it with the treasure gold, the purple color I'm using. Isn't that cool? So there's a way to make it work. I'm just accenting. Okay, go back. Say again. Shelly Nichols. Oh, is at the Meadows. Okay. Hi, Miss Shelly. <laughs> you guys are confusing me. All right. So we've got, let's go back to Facebook. And I don't know what I haven't used yet. Yeah, duplicate canvas, and then we're going to do the ornament as the last one. Okay, so back on Facebook, right? Okay, so let's do um, blue, the word blue, whoever types it in first on Facebook. And I'm going to paint while Jenny's watching for that. So here's your purple on top of the purple. So press and lift straight up. This is with that liner brush, the 3600. Gilbert! Gilbert won one of my canvases. Awesome. All right, Gilbert, I need your address. I don't think I have that. So message me. You know where to find me. And email. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to let Jenny pick. I'm going to put the pressure on her for the ornament finished. 
and she's going to have to just spin both of them and then I, I don't know how you're going to do it for both. Okay, you've got them all together on one feed. Okay, so she's going to, so she's given an equal, um, both Facebook and YouTube will be involved in this because we have a way of seeing both of those within the program that I use. So, okay, drum roll, please. The, who is the winner of a finished ornament? Brenda Martis. Awesome. Hey, Miss Brenda. Use fingers crossed. You got it, my dear. You got it. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I need your shipping information. Hopefully that gives you enough stuff, guys. Um, the leaves are the same thing as the um, petals. They're just done in two greens. Um, I may go do a short video on the whole thing, so you've got it also, and I'll post it. Uh, but it'll probably be the weekend before I can do that. Okay, let me uh, switch my camera back one second. unmute. Oh, there we go. Okay, now you should be able to hear me. Hi there. <laughs> All right, guys. So, Brenda, make sure you send me your information so I can send you the ornament, okay? I hope you've enjoyed this. I've had fun. Um, if you have any questions, I'll go through and answer questions and look for different things out there on both feeds. And uh, I sure didn't type blue in first. Well, it's it all appears on how Jenny sees it. Everybody, the you know, everybody's internet is different as far as what shows up first. Um, it's really crazy because I know I've been on things where I've done that and I thought mine was first and then uh, unfortunately somebody else was. So, okay. Totally enjoyed it. Thank you, Miss Donna. It was great to have you in class. All right, guys. You're welcome. And I will see you, Jenny, we're on in two weeks. Unless Jenny thinks she can do next week, we might do next week. I don't know. Okay. I'll talk with her. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Otherwise, it's in two weeks, which will be the week of Christmas. Is that right? I think. I'm a quizzinger. You've had a long day. Anyway, we'll let you know. I will announce it. Um, thank you, guys. Um, you know, I'm here. For you guys, you keep me going right now, and I swear I wasn't going to cry, so I'm not. I'm going to get off of here before I do, okay? Thank you for your support. I hope you enjoyed it, and happy painting on your ornaments or whatever you choose to paint on, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.